Hello, this is Jack Millen again with Tri-County Inspection Company as well as the House Whisperer Show. I get asked a lot of questions about sub-panels. People pretty much understand their own what we call primary panel that's in their basement, but every once in a while you kind of have to stretch the line in the building and install a sub-panel. So I'm starting outside here at Tri-County Inspection Cup because I want to talk about this aerial service. That's a three-wire line that gets connected here. So what we did because of the generator, we ran two lines down into a control room, fed the generator, and then literally came back here and fed these meters. Now this office supports actually three suites. So we have to have disconnects out here, but once your main disconnect is wired, then anything beyond that now becomes a subpanel. So let me explain. Now opposite those meters is my subpanel here. Um, excuse the mess, it's a very tight closet, but anyway, um, let, me, let me spend a minute on this. This is an approval sticker. In Pennsylvania, electricians, plumbers, home inspectors are not licensed by the state. So the electricians and plumbers are licensed by the, the municipalities of which they serve. So in New Jersey, I'm a licensed home inspector and the plumbers and the electricians are licensed as well. So Pennsylvania requires one of these green stickers, which is an underwriter sticker. And what that means is that another party had to come in to approve the work. So any of these Pennsylvania residents that are listening or watching, um, if you're having any new electrical work done, make sure that it's approved. Now, in my sub-panel, my main disconnect is rated for 100 amps. Now, when, when I renovated this building, what happened is we had to run another line to, to my office to support general lighting, my, um, my mini-split, and other electrical needs. So in, in lieu of filling this panel up, which is almost done anyway, what we did is we ran a 60 amp breaker back to my back closet so that we could run individual circuits there as well. So one line is easier than six or seven lines. So let me show you my sub panel. Now the biggest difference between a primary panel and a sub panel is that the wires, the bare wires here, have to be separated from the white wires. So in this panel, which as you see I've taken apart, these are called neutral bars. So the white wires have to be on their own neutral bar, and this is called a common bond. Now, don't do this at home, okay? <laughs> so, now, if you notice on this, this bar here, all the grounds are connected and independent of the neutrals. Why is that? That's the big question, because we call electrical force current. Current, think of a river. Current has to flow downhill. So the, the, the same thing happens with the subpanel. It, there is a risk of the ground wires being energized and sent back to the primary panel. So that's the biggest reason why we have to separate them. And this is always the biggest mistake that I see as a home inspector when I open up a subpanel. Now, how difficult is it to separate these grounds and neutrals? About a 20 minute job. And the thing is the electrician might have to purchase another neutral bar like this to put those ground wires on. The other thing that we look for is the removal of this little green screw, okay? This is a grounding screw. So normally I'll find this at the bottom of the distribution panel. So wire sizes and breaker sizes always have to be compatible. The other thing I look for all the time is to make sure that all my wires are protected as it comes through the top or sides or bottom of the panel. The other thing I find ironically are mice feces. And mice feces are caused, of course, by mice entering the box via holes or missing connectors. So, of course, uh, you know, we, we do flag that as a home inspection company. I've seen mice nests literally with insulation, nuts, and a bedroom. So he had his own little condo going on in there. So we don't tend to open our panels very often, but that's the, per that's the real reason of having a home inspection so that you do get this professional come through to make sure that all these panels are wired properly. The final thing we check is to make sure the wire sizes and breaker sizes are all compatible. I had a house the other day where there was a 30 amp circuit with what we call a 14 gauge wire, which is designed for a 15 amp wire. That could have caused a fire because breakers are called breakers because they're designed to fail. 
So bottom line, if you have a sub panel, make sure your grounds and neutrals are separated. Make sure that your little grounding screw has been removed. Sometimes I'll see another piece of aluminum right in here. Uh, that's called a bonding, uh, uh, a bond bar. That should be removed as well. So if you like this content, please push the subscribe button and I'll talk to you next time.